Hello again, students. Uh, we're moving on to the second section of oxidation and reduction. And we will move on to redox stability. OK, so how stable is a species in aqueous solution? Well, we're going to find that many redox reactions in aqueous solution will not only involve transfer of electrons, but will also involve the transfer of protons. And in this case, we are going to see that aqueous acids, um, where the majority component consists of water, can act as an oxidizing or a reducing agent. So in the first reaction over here, what we see is that water is reduced to hydrogen and in the second reaction over here we see that water is oxidized to oxygen um, so therefore the electrode potential for any reaction is going to be pH dependent and we're going to find that as we increase the pH so if we look on the graph over here this represents an increase in pH we're going to see that there's a subsequent decrease in electrode potential. Okay, so let's look at the first scenario where water can act as an oxidizing agent, where it itself is reduced to hydrogen. So we're going to look at this reaction here. We can see that the water reduced to the hydrogen, okay? And if we have a transfer of a proton in solution, so in other words, the water would result in the hydronium ion being formed, you would see that the water itself can be reduced to the hydrogen. Again, if we look on the graph, this is going to be represented by this bottom red line over here, okay? so. That's what I'm looking at. And if you follow the trend with me, if we start at pH zero over here, okay, and you will notice that there is the line, the red, the bottom red line has a negative slope that goes down that way. Okay. Again, the increase in pH results in a larger negative potential. What about when water is oxidized to oxygen? So water can act as a reducing agent. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to turn the first reaction that you see on the slide here, we need to turn it into a reduction potential. So it's written as the second reaction that you see here. And again, this is now going to correspond to this upper red line on this graph over here, okay? And again, you're going to see the same trend, okay? You're going to see the same trend that when we have an increase in pH, so we increase the pH this way, there's going to be a decrease in the potential this way. There's a negative slope of the line in that direction for the um, oxidation of, of water. Now, what about reacting metals with acid? Okay, so metals that generally have large negative standard potentials are going to react with aqueous acids to produce hydrogen. Okay, so that's a, that's a given. And that means that we're gonna see the reduction reaction occurring for the acid Okay, remember it's an aqueous acid, so it's essentially water that is being reduced to hydrogen. And then the metal itself is going to be oxidized over here. Okay, you can see that this is an oxidation going from, say, plus one oxidation state here to the zero oxidation state here. And a good example will be the reaction of scandium. Scandium uh, will go from its solid form to the plus three oxidation state over here. Now, metals with positive standard potentials will be reduced in water. So that means that water 
is going to be oxidized. Okay, so we will write, here is the reaction for what happens with water. And again, we're talking about aqueous solutions. So it's this here, okay, aqueous, um, referring to the fact that there's water. So water is going to be oxidized and the metals will be reduced. So there is the metal reaction and that is a standard reduction reaction. An example will be the um, um, reduction of, um, or, or, or of co cobalt, and it's in, in, in that cobalt will be reduced in this example. Okay, now we have a very unique situation for the simple case that um, some metals have more than one oxidation state. So um, we're going to tackle the example of copper. Uh, copper has the zero oxidation state, copper itself. Uh, we have copper one plus and copper two plus. The most stable oxidation states of copper are copper zero and copper two. But there is another stable state, or not so stable, but there is another state um, in terms of copper one plus, um, where we're going to see that a different redox reaction is going to take place. Like I said, the least stable is copper one plus um, in terms of this reaction here. And what we see, if you look carefully at this reaction here, copper one plus, okay, this is one plus, goes to zero and two plus. So it actually splits itself almost. From plus one, it splits itself into zero and plus two. There's a special name for this reaction. It's called disproportionation. And the definition is defined as the reaction where the oxidation number of an element is both, both raised and lowered at exactly the same time. So what you would see is we can represent it by its two half reactions. If we were looking at the standard reduction tables, you would see that the first half reaction is for the reduction of copper one plus, And this gives us a value of 0 0.52 volts that we got from the standard reduction tables. Then the second reaction is one where copper two plus goes to copper one plus over here. And if we pick this off the standard reduction table, we see that we get this value here, 0 0.16. We can calculate the cell, the cell potential for the main reaction, which is this reaction here. And we see that we get a positive 0 0.36 volts for this disproportionation reaction. The fact that the cell potential is positive implies that the reaction is spontaneous. And subsequently, the delta G will have a negative value over here, which means also that the redox reaction is spontaneous. Now, what you need to do is you need to be able to do calculations that involve disproportionation. So one of the applications of this section of the work, redox stability, is for you to practice examples. There are two examples in the textbook that you can try. The first example is example 5.6. And the second example is self-test 5.6. So go ahead and practice some of those. All right, there's one more that we need to look at, and that is called comproportionation. Comproportionation is simply the reverse of disproportionation. It's where two species with the same element in different oxidation states form a product in which the element is an intermediate oxidation state, but that oxidation, that intermediate oxidation state is very stable. And a classic example of this is with silver. So we can get silver two plus reacting with silver solid to give us silver one plus. This is the stable form of it. And you can actually see that the cell potential is very positive as plus 1.18 volts and obviously the delta G value will be very negative as well. That concludes this section of the work and you can move on to the next section when you get a chance.